So this is the the girl's house and the boy's house. Now the girl's house and the boy's house, there were two houses, empty houses, and a road close to the 491 gallery. People were like really interested in, in working, you know, the project, they were really getting into it. But the, the, the site was a bit of a bomb site. There's, there's very little accommodation. So um, we decided to squat two houses. Well, I, ideally, we just found them, really. I mean, we didn't decide to squat two houses. That's exactly what happened. And they were next to each other. And they had a shared garden. There was a wall next to the house, and um, there was a kind of alleyway, and then obviously the M11 Link Road. The whole back of the door being kind of carved, you know, just ripped. So you had to kind of scrunch under the back door to get in. And then went in and it was just like, oh my God, it was like, like it's like a f like alien, you know, it's all dark in there. Everything's boarded up. Um, is there anyone in there? We're squatting this and we don't know if there's anyone in there, man. Really, seriously, no one's done a recce, so we're terrifying in a way, you know, because there's a little bit of a chink of light around about the kitchen, but once you start going down the passageway and into the front rooms, and especially upstairs, you know, it's all black and dark, and there's just rubble under your feet, you just don't know what it is, and um, scrunching noises, and just the smell, and yeah, basically checking the building out to make sure there's no one in there. I don't know if, what we would have quite done if someone had found someone. Um, pretending to be the landlord, maybe. <laughs> so in the morning, we were like, we had to hold the building, then we're going to change the locks and, um, you know, work it all out. Um, section six it, section six it, and then, you know, take on board the house next door as well and this one was clearly a crack place it was clearly clearly where people had gone to score but also to um take and and also to work out what they'd managed to steal because there was bags and there's all sorts there was all sorts of stuff there you know like like hints at robberies and or thefts or whatever you know to, just to get hit it was it was, uh, it was fancy looking car pulls up outside and we're like who the fuck is this man is this the owner right and this gangster dude kind of gets out proper fucking gangster dude yeah someone's coming to check on us yeah literally we're, we're behind the door and we can kind of see through through chinks we can see him yeah could see all this but you can see us yeah and he's sort of like the, talking through the letterbox you know he's like calling out names and he's not getting any reply yet so um we took the house then we took the house next door a couple of days into the occupation we decided to take a look in the in the loft so we went up there um yeah Quite a sight. Um, there was absolutely nothing in the loft, just dust and just one one item in that loft, a wedding dress. Just shimmering in in yeah on in the, in a torchlight. Yeah, a wedding dress with even like bits of confetti entangled in the in the, in the lace. Very lacy. Uh, anyway, it probably came up in the Monday meeting. One of the someone had the idea that. We turned one house into the boy's house and one house into the girl's house. There wasn't like, you know, any other. Um, yeah, no one was really saying, you know, this should be another option. So straight boys and girls. So in our house, we've got like Anthony, the original American, African, Indian. Um, Steph, who's a DJ. Well, I was in the downstairs. Oh, yeah, Mad Tony. Fuck, Mad Tony. Yeah, and he was the other guy. So, um, Wanakis Tony. What a crowd to be living in that place. 
And then in the next house, the next door, there was Gwen, um, Mary, Isabel, I think. Oh, there was a few, maybe two other people. I'm not sure. I can't remember the names, but um, that was the girls' house. And we had the shared garden, yeah. But we we had cold water, but no boilers. We hadn't quite got round to the boilers yet. And um, so washing wasn't too good. And there was just one the one shower, and maybe not even that at the moment, at the four and one gallery. So washing is, was an issue. In both houses had kettles. Um, we'd boil up some water. Um, we'd pour it into some sort of bucket type thing. We used to just have showers in that back garden, yeah. Naked people washing each other in the back garden at the boys' house and the girls' house, you know. Pretty much the girls would have a shift. The boys weren't really so into washing each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? We'd do it, like, probably in secret and stuff, and um, we were a bit too shy to join the girls. But the girls seemed to just go for it, and they helped each other, and they, they washed each other's hair, and that was the main thing, washing hair. And it needed some sort of shower effect of so someone to hold the water above their head, and then, you know, just a raised level of railway line. It's train quite regularly, just whizzing past, particularly the rush hour. The train completely full, everyone like, on the one side of the train, like, uh, bored out of their fucking air, minds heading back from some nightmare job, you know, like, just uh, reading and bullshit in the newspaper and just gazing out the window. Just a beautiful idea to think that there was this audience that would suddenly pop by. Anyway, Mad Tony was there, right? And Mad Tony, anarchist Tony, Tony Hooligan. So yeah, Tony had the idea, he got into massage at one stage, and he got some sort of vibrating stick that I think just ran straight off the mains. Some sort of vibrating <clears throat> device, you know, and he thought he'd turn his room, his entire room, into this massage parlor, and um, which he did. And he, he he managed to get all these pictures of puppies' faces dotted along the wall, yeah, like the whole room had pup, puppies' faces, and um, you know, all that stuff. Now, it was my job to, to answer the door. Maybe I, I just gave a sense of my middle-class niceness. I, I did give a sense of, um, what's the word? I don't know. I, I might have given it the edge, actually, in terms of it being a credible thing and not a highly dangerous and stupid thing to do. Um, but local women, one woman in particular, was, I don't know, just like the excitement of coming to this dodgy squat with all these dodgy blokes and um, having them going into a really dodgy room with puppies on the wall with this guy, uh, Tony, I must admit, must tell you, he's kind of wears black, wears boots, um, he's tall, he's he's got kind of like skeleton face in the sense that he's... he's um, there's not a lot of flesh on that face. He, he's got, he had mad eyes. Um, yeah, skinhead. But well, it was my job to basically um, play the whale music. You know, when, when someone arrives, bang on the door, straight on with the whale music, then I answer the door, cup of tea. Then Tony would kind of appear from his room in like some sort of, Magician, like, like, no, no, some sort of like doctor, or I don't know. Um, anyway, yeah, and and massage, take 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 this, um, you know, his slight. I don't know how old, how old she been in the fifties, maybe fifties, late forties. Yeah, housewife, former former married woman, now divorced, looking for adventure with the hippies, and. She'd disappear in and, and have a massage. And um, I actually did have a massage with Tony. He kind of had promised me that I, because I, I, I wasn't really, I didn't really like, oh my God, 
don't promise me that, <laughs> please. I don't want a fucking massage. I'd done something and he was returning the favour, so he said, I'll do it by giving you a massage. So, and I went, so yeah, I did experience it. I think he was probably made a little bit more of an effort with the local divorcee um, than um, me, because he seemed to rush it a bit. He seemed to, like, shove me with this vibrating stick and... Uh, you know, I don't know, I'm one of those people that if I'm having a massage or something like that, I just shut my eyes. I don't know. I don't want to be staring at a puppy being like, I don't know, uh, prodded by a skinhead. Um, yeah. Animal rights activist, Tony. Yeah. With the ALF, he always used to go on about the ALF, Animal Liberation Front. I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> I didn't enjoy it. No way. Um, mm. So the boys asked and the girls asked. And um, one of the weird things, I just, oh yeah, we got robbed once, didn't we? Lots of the things happened in this house and the different stories. They are related to the 401 because, or the, or the gallery, I mean, sorry, all Vertigo because I was commuting from this house to go and work in Vertigo and then come back, you know? And other people were commuting from this house to go and perform or run a workshop or, you know? So these are like workers' cottages, I suppose you could say. Um, so we got served, and part of the serving process is they have to identify that actually that you're squatting so they can get rid of you, yeah? And they had photographs and maps and a little kind of like you know coloured box where they where we are yeah there's a coloured box where we are now we were at the end of the road at that stage yeah but the maps and the photographs they were sending to us were like pre M11 link road days so there's a house next to us obviously it's gone now it was destroyed um there's a photograph of this house, the house that was destroyed next to us. There's, um, you know, it's on the map, you can see it. But there's no fucking motorway, there's no six lane, they missed the fucking six lane motorway. I think it might, yeah, it might be in East Town, we went to a, some sort of court, uh, well, not, magistrate's court, yeah. And, um, they, you know, we just, we were just talking for ourselves and talked about the project and why, why, we wanted, we needed to be there, you know, it's accommodation, we do stuff for the community, um, you know, really, we, we're nice people. Right? One day, Tony really lost the plot, um, just, just completely lost it. Um, he hadn't been sleeping much, I suppose, and um, yeah, it just seemed agitated all the time nervous and things came to a head one morning when um, me and Jacqueline were in our room and suddenly the, there was just an explosion of crashes and bangs and wallops and just rips and just like the sound of a room from another room being completely ripped apart yeah um and that went on for a while. It was quite terrifying to feel the the rage, the absolute rage. That was very scary. Um, we sort of cowered behind the door, sort of prepared to hold the door back. Should we have to? Yeah, no, it was terrifying. And then it kind of ended with Tony smashing a bike on the doorstep. I think it was his bike, just picking it up and just smashing it against the ground. Smashing it against the ground. And then walking off. Going off. And we're like, oh shit, you know, what the fuck was that all about? And we kind of blocked up the courage to go and have a look at what he'd done to his room and it was completely trashed. And, and we decided there and then we, we needed to get out of the house 
find you know maybe make the move finally to, to vertigo um actually make the move so um we did we moved out in a day we just moved our stuff lots of shopping trolleys um worth of stuff rattled between in the boys house and and corner road sorry the boys house and uh, 491 gallery vertigo yeah and then a few months later probably a few weeks later um the it all came to an explosive head with with the um boys house and the girls house when um the bomb squad was called apparently tony he was the only one in occupation now everyone had left um so he one morning he, he decided to start writing war slogans all over the pavement outside apparently according to the local reports um neighbors sort of complained and and, and he, he was all you know rude to them um i think they were anti-war slogans yeah or something like that um and they phoned the police and the police came and apparently Tony mumbled something or said something or threatened something about there being gas in the cellar. Um, and this kind of siege situation occurred involving loads of police and apparently the bomb squad was called up because they, they didn't know whether this, they didn't know what Tony was about and whether or not he was an extremist and whether or not he was going to blow up the house. Um, yeah, so I've got this kind of newspaper clipping of uh, Tony kind of leaning out the window with a, um, with his face covered, looking like a, a right gangster or a bank robber or, yeah. And um, I think it was the girl's house. He's leaning out one of the windows of the girl's house. And um, that was that. They eventually, I don't know, moved in on him and he didn't blow the place up, but I imagine he, he did get sections, and I think that was one of the last times I saw him. I mean, around that time, I didn't see him again. He disappeared. So, um, yeah, someone who'd been involved, been around the scene, you know, from the M11 days to all the way through the 491 and the Vertigo times. Um... Yeah, I think actually, you know, thinking about it, probably the last time I saw Tony, he was pissing through Sedex's letterbox. He had a thing, I think that he'd got kind of banned from the 401 after destroying the, the, the boy's house. Um, or well, his room in the boy's house, I think. It's something, I think it came up. But for some reason he'd been banned. And for some reason um, he took it on the... Sedek was responsible and had a bit of a vendetta against him. Um, you know, there's a lot of bad blood. So, um, yeah, I think that was the last time I saw him pissing through um, Sedek's letterbox. <laughs> yeah, just just kind of hunching over and just sticking his tackle through the letterbox. Oh my god. In like this is in Grove Green Road. This is a busy road with buses going past and cars, loads of cars, people walking around, maybe walking the kids to school or whatever. And yeah, crazy, fucking crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, it was quite a dramatic end to uh, what had been a very interesting social experiment. Boys' house and the girls' house. <laughs>